the early working title for my thesis is The Virtual Altar, Commodity, Sacrifice and the Subject in the Metaverse. And so my objective is to delineate the emerging virtual commercial space known as the metaverse. And what I observed so far is that the metaverse initially appears as a space of pure potential and consequence free enjoyment and sacrifice is delegated out of sight into the physical world. But upon closer examination, this virtual space is really interwoven with the sacrifice of its users. And in my research so far, I draw from Matt Singer and Chalmers, who write about technology and virtual reality. And um, I also utilize the work of Todd McGowan, Giorgio Agamben, Christian Fuchs, and Marx. So um, I will share some thoughts uh, today about the metaverse and the commodity, labor, and sacrifice in this space. So uh, when I say metaverse, I refer to commercial virtual, virtual reality infrastructure developed by leading tech companies. Uh, so for example, Horizon Worlds by Meta. And I really see it as a new frontier of the advancement of capital. And an example could be a rapid expansion of virtual land sale uh, that reached $2, uh, $2 billion in the last uh, 12 months. And I started my exploration by attempting to understand what virtual means. And in technology, uh, virtual usually means digital simulated and philo in philosophy it's more often understood as potential and I find I find this actually very meaningful and useful here. Uh, Matt Singer defines technological virtual reality as the representation of possible worlds and possible selves with the aim of making them appear ever more realistic. And so there is this interesting media rhetoric about the metaverse that captures this sense of possibility and especially a perceived lack of constraints. So we can hear claims such as the metaverse is as expansive as the imagination of its creators, or there will be no limit to what is possible, and this will lead to exponential growth. And I think it's not accidental that this expansive virtual space of possibility is gaining traction right now. So we have this late capitalism struggling with resource scarcity and we are continuously warned there is no planet B. And in this context, the metaverse emerges as this kind of an attractive alternative, a limitless B space. And um, I will quote from Todd McGowan, who says that we need uh, both a sufficient distance as well as an unconscious awareness of the worker's sacrifice in order to enjoy a commodity. The labor embodied in the commodity must remain hidden, though we must also maintain an unconscious awareness of it. So we can consider the metaverse as a convenient distraction from the sacrifice of, of capitalist production. For example, virtual land sale in the metaverse defies legal restrictions with plots of land available that can be used in any way desired without planning permissions. But everything that has a potential virtual presence has a corresponding physical presence on the finite, finite earth. Starting from requiring energy consumption to access it through data centers, VR hardware and technology workers developing the experience. And this cost is seemingly removed and placed out of sight while the metaverse remains as a space of consequence-free, unlimited enjoyment. And then um, the closer analysis shows that the metaverse worlds are really marked with the sacrifice of the users. So in Christian tradition, we have the world creation occurring ex nihilo, um, while the commodified digital worlds inevitably always emerge ex laboro. Um, so that brings me to Marx. Um, and in an essay, Marx or the universe, Universal Exposition, Agamben quotes the guide to the Paris Exposition of 1867. The public needs a grandiose concept that will strike its imagination. Its spirit must halt, astonished, before the marvels of the industry. It wishes to contemplate an enchanted scene and not similar products uniformly group grouped. And I think with the metaverse, we encounter this next grandiose imaginative concept, a commodified space filled with enchanted objects, which Marx referred to as an 
an essentially immaterial and abstract piece of goods whose concrete enjoyment is impossible except through accumulation and exchange. So from, from here, um, I will ut utilize research of Fuchs to start clarifying the digital and virtual labor and explore the nature of users' sacrifice in the metaverse. Fuchs talks about uh, how capital attempts to commodify disposable time through the emergence of play labor, digital labor, and prosumption. The cause is the imperialistic tendency of capitalism on one side to create disposable time, on the other to convert it into surplus labor. And he further explains um, the digital labor in his analysis of Facebook, which we should remember recently turned into Meta, a company that spent uh, $36 billion so far developing commercial virtual worlds. The abstract status of labor and the commodity that cannot be directly experienced by the user is veiled by the pseudo-concreteness of free access to the platform, social benefits, and a playful atmosphere. And due to this crucial social aspect of the metaverse, a subject is never a pure consumer in this space. As further explained by Fuchs, Facebook sells a commodity in which users' attention and personal data is objectified. Users produce this commodity and Facebook exploits them and thereby accumulates capital. And for me, the crucial move of the metaverse is taking this process to the next level, utilizing VR headset and corresponding devices to establish a subjective sense of presence in the commodified digital world. Um, and here um, I utilize Metzinger's um, definition of presence as a complex phenomenal quality of three dimensions identification, self-location in a temporal frame of reference, and self-location in space. So in this way, uh, immersive commercial virtual reality allows capital not only to create disposable time that can be commodified, but also disposable space, effectively progressively turning presence into a commodity. And I think this disposable space is very useful for capital's future expansion as it encounters resource scarcity on Earth. Behind the veil of free access, social benefits, and a playful atmosphere, a metaverse user emerges as a worker who is nevertheless not perceived as important in the digital age class struggle and not considered a true worker. Not only do they not receive compensation for their labor, but they pay for commodities such as the VR headset that will then commodify their presence as laborers providing them with a new way to sacrifice themselves. And uh, so I'm just finishing up, but I think suddenly we are finding ourselves on a very political territory and we can see how this environment contributes to a division between, this is again quoting uh, Fuchs, wage workers in the non-digital economy who remain uh, seen as a true locus of power. And then on the other side, subjects interacting in the metaverse, which, else, which are still perceived as mere consumers who are just enjoying and not participating in the shared struggle. Thank you.